What's good, everybody? I thought I'd talk today a little bit about uh, my journey with uh, Christianity and um, why I resisted or rebelled so hard against um, against the Lord. Um, but uh, any, yeah, anyway, uh, I grew up. I've said many times before, I think, on this channel that I was born to an unwed mother uh, when she was 19 years old. And, um, <clears throat> her parents, my grandparents, are fantastic people. My grandfather died when I was 11 years old, but he was kind of like, kind of like a, a dad to me. My dad was always in the picture, but he was, um, I didn't live with my dad. I lived at my grandparents' house with my grandparents, and, you know... I remember, or my parents, my mom especially tells me all the time that I would say, oh, we're going to church, like whenever we would go to church, because we would go to church quite a bit. I was raised Church of Christ. We would go every Sunday and on Wednesday nights, and uh, I used to call it chooch, and I loved it. I was ecstatic about going to church uh, at any opportunity. I thought it was great. Uh, the preacher at the church we went to did a, something called uh, Wendell's Early Bird Club. Or, yeah, I think it was called the Early Bird Club, Club. And he would give out, you know, like stickers or, you know, like erasers shaped like smiley faces or something like that to all the kids that would come early to catch his little um, childhood sermon. And I, I think that was a great idea. Um, to have kind of a more specified sermon for children earlier or later in the, uh, I mean, it was like a class almost, but it was more, um, it was more specific. It had, uh, in Bible classes, at least when I was growing up, they would like talk about one verse and it was just pretty much about memorizing that verse and they didn't really give you much, um, you didn't really get a lot of insight to what that verse was talking about. They just wanted you to know the verse. <clears throat> and that's fine. You know, I went to several churches as a kid, and it seemed that was what happens in a Sunday school class. But that early bird club uh, really gave you some insight, and it allowed you to have perspective. It gave you perspective to what the Bible was talking about. Uh, but, you know, I mean, I was, I was, you know, three and four year old kid. And, um, I guess some of those messages didn't really stick with me or they didn't make sense to me at the time. I think a lot of times you have to, I think you really have to be broken in order to understand, uh, just what the, the Bible is talking about. Sometimes you have to have, you have to have gone to a place where rebirth is necessary. But anyway, um, my great grandparents, um, you know, my grandparents had my mom when they were very young as two, I think they were 20 when they had her. And my great grandfather was a Church of Christ preacher. We didn't go to his church, uh, but he was a preacher. And, uh, we, I, we didn't go to his church. I didn't realize this at the time, but, um, my grandmother had a very rough childhood. Um, and growing up with her parents, her, my great-grandmother and my great-grandfather was very difficult. And I think being around them uh, was just, I mean, my great, we would go visit them or they'd come over on Christmas or, you know what I mean? But um, I think it was just stressful for my grandparents and for my mom and my aunts. Um, but I've heard so many stories, and I don't want to get into specifics because, you know, I mean, it is my family, but it's not really my place to tell you what my great-grandfather has done to other family members of mine. But just know that he's done some really terrible things and really hypocritical things as a preacher, as a, a minister of the word. He's done some very hypocritical things that would uh, 
that don't really add up with being a man of God. So I think um, just knowing that as a child and uh, seeing hypocrisy in the church that we went to, I was very turned off from Christianity for a long time. I didn't understand a lot of the, a lot of the uh, parables and stuff that like uh, when Jesus kills that uh, fig tree, I always wondered why he just didn't make it bear fruit. Or when Jesus um, made those wild pigs jump off that cliff, I didn't understand why he didn't just make them calm down. But it's not your place really to question what God does, you know. Um, but I didn't understand that at the time. I thought that um, my way of thinking was the ultimate good way of thinking, you know. And I didn't understand that these things in the Bible are really parables that are just meant to teach us something. <clears throat> so, I was I was raised as a fundamentalist, as the Word of God is what it says, and it can't be in interpreted any other way. And that was, of course, very, a big turnoff to me as well, because... Like I said, I didn't understand the significance of some of these stories, and um, I didn't understand what it was talking about. I wasn't really uh, committed enough to really search out for for a uh, solution to these problems I had with the scripture. But uh, as time went on, and as I moved further away from God, my life got more and more difficult. Um, you know, I started using drugs at a very early age. Uh, I think the first time I tried cocaine, I was like 13 years old or something like ridiculous that, you know, you only see in like Harmony Kareem films or something like that. But uh, that's what happened to me. I made friends with um, older kids or just equally as rebellious kids as I was and we got further into our degeneracy and I'm not even really talking about them but I got further into my de degeneracy and I uh, kind of reveled in it for a while um, I wasn't happy I don't think I was ever really happy until I was about 25, but I wasn't happy because I felt like I was not living up to my purpose and that I didn't, uh, I didn't have a purpose. I thought that my mother should have gotten an abortion, uh, and finished college, you know? I thought that was the most important thing because that's what, you know, that's basically what we're taught in school is, you know, if... You get pregnant and it's an inconvenience you should just uh, go to Planned Parenthood and um, I'm so grateful that my my mother did it and I'm grateful that my grandparents didn't pressure her to do so in order to save face I mean that's something that happens pretty frequently uh, or it used to happen pretty frequently in um, churches they if uh, someone's daughter got pregnant, they would go to another state and uh, have an abortion because they didn't want to be embarrassed in front of their congregations. And I'm just so grateful that my parents, my mother especially, my father was not really religious, but I'm so grateful that my mother was willing to face her own problems, to admit what she had done, you know, I mean, she wouldn't have a choice, she's going to be showing, you know, you, you can tell when someone is pregnant, and um, I'm just so grateful that my parents allowed me to live, uh, in spite of what everyone else may have thought, and, um, you know, I thanked my grandmother earlier today for that. I said, you know, I'm so grateful that you didn't pressure my mom into getting an abortion. Because, 
you know, I wouldn't be here. And her response was was great. I was start crying, but uh, her response was that you know any amount of embarrassment would be worth the blessings that I've I've brought to her, and you know it's just it's a beautiful thing, and um it's a beautiful thing. To be able to admit to your mistakes, and to uh, to live out the consequences, it's hard. It can be, uh, it can feel bad in the moment, but if you really own up to what your mistakes have been, in the long run, those mistakes will turn into blessings. And uh, you know that's been. The story of my life, you know, <laughs> that's that is me in a nutshell. Um, I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty uh, willing to admit when I've done wrong, or when I've hurt someone or made a mistake, and um, it's it's never fun to have to do that. But when you do, oftentimes relationships get closer, and you have you you gain more support. When you fess up to something, then you you have, you know, previous to the mistake. People people don't want to disown you. They don't want to they don't want you to be a bad person. You know what I mean? So if you're willing to say, hey, I had a, I made a mistake. I ha I had a lapse of faith or I got pregnant, or whatever it may be, more times than not, people are going to flock towards you. They're going to embrace you and say, hey, I've been through that too, or I've done something equally as bad, and you'll grow and you'll you'll really come together as um, com a community of people who care about you, you know, family members and uh, church members or whoever friends, whoever you consider to be, um, the people that you love, they. It's better to be honest and upfront with those people, than to try to um, hide whatever mistakes you've been making. Because if you hide your mistakes, you're not going to grow. You're not going to learn from those mistakes. You're just going to focus all your energy on hiding whatever it is that you did. And, um, you know, I don't know. I'm sorry if this isn't making uh, a ton of sense. I've had kind of a rough day. You know, my job is really um, stressful right now. And, um, like I said, I was talking to my grandmother earlier, and it's just been kind of emotional. And, uh, you know. I hope this made sense, guys. I, I'll watch this before I post it to make sure that it does make sense. But um, I love you guys. Um, take it easy and be safe. Oh, and feel free to like this or share it or whatever.